Hey guys, what's going on? D Rag here. This is season four, episode one of Scotch and Scripts. I'm sipping on the Glimmerangi, uh, extremely rare. And uh, we're going to do something different for this first episode of season four. Scotch and Scripts Takeover. So I am Michelle Radney. I'm David's wife of 21 years. I wanted to do an interview with David. So everybody knows there's always a guest on Scotch and Scripts, there's a guest on Morning Mindset. But I thought I would interview David, let everyone else see a little bit more about who he is, the man behind the TikTok videos, push, scotch and scripts, the camera where you see the beautiful uh, photographs that he has. So I wanted to give you all an inside peek of who he really is outside of those things. So thank you for having me. Thank you for letting me do this. Thank you for being here. excited for the conversation. So I, of course, know your background and know who you are and know your story. But for those who are not as familiar, tell us a little bit about you. Where did you grow up? Okay. High level of the journey. I'll get into some of the other questions, but how we got here. All right. So I'll, I'll make this quick. So I was born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. I left Cleveland when I was 17 and met, moved to Los Angeles. That's where we met in Los Angeles. Uh, we've been on the journey since then. Uh, I've lived in Austin, Houston, Dallas, uh, Bergen County, New Jersey. Now I live in Hunterdon County, New Jersey. So, you know, over 21 years, a lot of traveling, uh, but it's brought us here to New Jersey. And uh, we've been here for about 10 years. That was very edited, high level version. There's a lot more on the journey in between there, but we'll get into a little bit of good, that. Good, good, good. So tell us a little bit about when you were younger. So we know who you are today, but who did you think you were going to be? What was what was your idea of a career when you were younger? I, I think that's a great question. You know, I love animals, and I think you guys who know me know that through my photography. At one point in time, I actually wanted to work at the zoo, and that transitioned to me wanting to actually start a farm and have a farm. Uh, however, I realized that the type of lifestyle I wanted to live, those careers didn't support that type of lifestyle. So of course things have changed over time, but I never had that one thing that I really wanted to do in life. For me, it was about making money in the beginning. And it wasn't until I stumbled into real estate and stumbled into coaching that I actually found my purpose and found my passion. So how did you get into real estate? Oof. Okay. So, I mean, that's, that can be a long discussion. I can give you the Reader's Digest version or really get into it. You don't want the Reader's Digest You don't want the, okay. You want so, the... Um, so, great, great question. So, you and I, if you remember this, we were living in Austin and went to our, our church, uh, Victory Christian Center, and they had a guest speaker come in and there was a, a mastermind around mindset. And the, the speaker told everyone to raise their hand if they had something that they wanted to accomplish in life that they hadn't accomplished. And I just kind of randomly raised my hand, not thinking he would call on me. He called on me and he asked me, what was it that I wanted to do that I hadn't accomplished? And for me, it was buying investment property. I knew that you create wealth through real estate and it was something I wanted to do, but I dragged my feet. I never really got around to it. So he asked me if I was willing to put my money where my mouth was and take a challenge. He asked me if I had my checkbook with me. And of course, we had our checkbook because we were in church. And he asked me to write a check for $1,000. Now, for those of you who know me, I don't play when it comes to money. So when he was asking me to write that check in my head, I was like, nope, I'm not doing it. But when you're in a church and it's filled with people that are watching you tell the story and they're all clapping and cheering for you to write the check, that pressure makes you write the check. Uh, so I wrote the check for $1,000. I gave it to a gentleman I knew from the men's ministry. And the deal was, if I didn't have an investment property, at least under contract in two months, that gentleman got to cash that check. That's not happening on my watch. And so immediately I got after it. I found a real estate agent. And within two weeks, Michelle and I were under contract on our first investment property that we still own. We're, we're talking 19 years ago. And we still own that property. So that was how I got into real estate and actually realized that I liked the investment side of it, which led me to a career where I was you know, selling HUD foreclosures and helping other investors buy property and lease those properties out for rental income. And then that took me down the path where 
I realized that I could actually make some really good income in real estate, helping other people, you know, buy and sell and invest in real estate. So that allowed me to leave my full time career and actually get into uh, real estate full time right around 2004, right in that area. So it sounds like that was your first accountability partner in a real way. <sighs> they put the, he put the screws to me and that was, that was real accountability for sure. I remember that. I remember the session. I mm -hmm. remember the breakout. I remember you sweating about writing this check oh my gosh. and actually really writing the check Yes. and giving it to someone who you didn't know Right. and, and actually agreeing that they could cash the check. Uh, it was for a donation, so not just cash the check and go shopping, but they could cash the check. That's right. You're right. If you didn't do what you said you would do. Mm-hmm. So that led to your career in real estate. Correct. But it was a journey that I watched closely around your passion for helping other people. So there was yeah. the buying and selling. There was the financial aspect. There was this thrill of negotiating that you had. But there was a turning point where this passion for helping others, for coaching others came about. Tell us, do you remember... Was there a turning point? Was there a specific time? Yeah. How did that happen? So I, I would say it really, I'll take you back to probably summer of 2009. We had moved to Dallas. We were um, new to Dallas and I was in a new market center for, for Keller Williams. And at this point in time, those of you who know my story, you know, I had a, a major fear of public speaking and get in front, getting in front of a room of two people, let alone 20 or 30 or 40 people. And yet I, I learned that I needed to master scripts. And the best way to master scripts is to practice and role play. So to help me, but also to help other people, I started arranging these small script practice with one or two people, you know, and that, that helped me get out of my comfort zone to help them get out of their comfort zone to help me master scripts. What I realized, though, is that after a few weeks and a couple of months of doing this over and over again every day, not only did I get better, but those other agents started getting better, too. And they started getting on the phones and having success and getting listings. And when they would come back to me and say, hey, thank you for the role play. Thank you for pushing me and motivating me because I was able to secure the listing. That's when it really clicked for me that I, I have a passion helping people. And I, I do recognize that if you help enough people get what they want, you also get what you want. So that's that's been my philosophy uh, philosophy since then, since two thousand nine. It's beautiful, and to see it, and to see you actually start to shape it into something and yeah. something more formal and more official, if you will, yeah. and where it's open to more people being involved in it, and so mm -hmm. it was the beginning of COVID, like even right before COVID, that push started. So yeah. tell us how PUSH came to be and what PUSH stands for, for those who don't know. Okay, well, PUSH stands for Prospect Until Success Happens. And here's how PUSH came to be. Um, throughout my career, uh, I have sat down several times and I wrote out a list. What do I love about real estate? What do I hate doing in real estate? The things I didn't care for, I learned to leverage and hire transaction coordinators and, and marketing help and support to take things off my plate that I didn't really care for. And it was right around the end of 2018 that I started writing that list up again. And I, I said to myself, what do I love about real estate? And yes, I do love the, the challenge of getting on the phone and converting a for sale by owner and it inspired to list with me. But the biggest thing that kept showing up on that list is the way I felt when I could help other agents do that as well. And I, I knew that there was something in me. I had a knack for the coaching. I had a knack for sharing my story and inspiring other people to get out of their comfort zone to have success. So when that list was so heavy with mentoring and coaching, I decided to stop doing real estate sales and transition into coaching. And so right around the beginning of 2019 is when I started PUSH. Uh, we, my first class, I probably had 10 or 12 people in that class, uh, but it, it was a success. And I'm so happy to say that a majority of those people who took that initial class are having tons of success. They're capping, they're rising stars in the real estate community. And uh, Push has been off to a great start since then. 
All right, so I want you to pause, uh -huh. take a breath, I'll relax, take, can I get a drink? have a drink. Yes, thank you. Cheers. So I too, so in a little bit of a break to the questions, I'm yes. drinking red wine, Pinot Noir today, mm -hmm. you're drinking your scotch. Oh, and then, it's a good one too. <clears throat> so you have Scotch and Scripps. I have Scotch this and Scripps. This is the Scotch and Scripps takeover, podcast takeover. And you, I hear you all the time talking about Scotch and Scripps, and you don't have to drink Scotch to join Scotch and Scripps. You're drinking Scotch. I'm drinking red wine. Tell the listeners, the viewers, about what is Scotch and Scripps, how it came to be, and if you don't have to drink Scotch to join it, and you're not doing scripts necessarily. Why is it called? Yeah. Why is it called Scotch and Scripts? So great question. You know, I um, I started this podcast before I really started the call on Wednesday evening, the Scotch and Scripts call, and the podcast was started as a way for me to interview agents and, and get their story. I love Scotch, and I'm known for scripts, and so part of the podcast in the beginning was talking to people about scripts that they use to have success. And so when I thought about doing a call on Wednesday evening, it just seemed right to me to call it Scotch and Scripts because that's what I enjoy. Uh, I have to tell you, I've had some struggles with that because when people see that name come up on their calendar, of course, they immediately think, well, I don't drink Scotch and I don't really want to join a call Wednesday evenings at 5 p.m. where we have to script and role play. I've had enough work. I've had enough Zoom calls, so I don't really want to join a call like that. And yet... Once people got educated on what the call was really about, they started to join. Here's what the call is about. It's not a happy hour? No. Yeah. It's a happy hour. It's a happy hour. It just doesn't require that you actually drink. You, know, you can pour a cup of tea, you can have water, or you can you know, choose whatever drink you like. But it's really a, a place where you can have a conscious conversation about life, what's happening in your world with other like-minded people who are in the same industry as you. So we talk about things like the drunk monkey, that monkey mindset, uh, fear of success. We talk about fear of failure. So we, we talk about a lot of important topics. And one thing I, I'm so happy about is that it's a tribe of people who really care about each other and encourage each other. So agents feel safe to kind of let their guard down. And a lot of times on these calls, people have breakdowns. They also have tremendous breakthroughs, and it's it's just a great call where we get to know each other, fellowship, and have a great time, whether or not you are drinking scotch. So I sometimes will come in and say hello. Uh, sometimes I'll come in and there's a lot of jovial energy, and sometimes I'll come in and the conversation is so deep that I don't want to interrupt just to say hello. So can you tell us about, without saying names, yeah. um, one of the most memorable, in whatever way that comes to you, one of the most memorable evenings, Wednesdays of Scotch and Scripps, uh, be it the topic or the energy or breakthroughs or successes, what might that be? There's a lot of them I know, right. but... Maybe one or two of the most memorable. So one of the most memorable uh, Scotch and Scripps, I, I had someone come on the call who uh, had some medical issues and had gone through dozens of surgeries. And we, we talked about their journey and how hard that was to push through. It was, it was such a great call and it, it, it made us all realize, number one, talk about gratitude. We, we, we talk about gratitude a lot on the calls that I, that I host. And when you can have someone that's gone through that type of adversity and they still show up with a smile on their face and they are grateful for the life they have, even though they've had a lot of struggle, how can you, you know, operate and not operate out of gratitude yourself? So that, that was one story. The other story, I, I have to say, really uh, surrounded me. Uh, one thing I like to do on these calls, I, I, I walk the talk, right? I um. I'm willing to share and open up about what's happening in my life and what's happening in my head. Uh, it, it's not a call where I'm having all the answers. I don't have all the answers, and I tell that to people all the time. What I want to do is create a conversation so that we can all level up and grow by talking about certain situations that come up. And one of the things that I have been challenged with was this whole fear of success as I look to grow my coaching business I had that drunk monkey whispering in my ear around 
fear of success and fear of failure. And when I was willing to have that conversation openly on the call one evening, so many other people chimed in and started sharing about their similar struggles around that. And what I love, again, about this call is that we all supported each other and encouraged each other to go all in. And people still continuously check in with me. I call them my mini accountability partners because all the things I told them I had some, some fear around, they always call and check in and see how I'm doing around that area and push me to live my best life. So I, I love that about the call. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing that. And so mm -hmm. it's scotch and scripts. Mm -hmm. You like scotch. Tell us about what kind of scotch oh. you like. So first of all, I, I believe my favorite scotch I haven't tasted yet. So I'm enjoying this journey of trying different scotches to find the ones that I actually enjoy. Um, I have found, though, the ones that I tend to like are ones that most people don't care for. And those are the ones from Islay. You know, these are the peaty uh, scotches that almost smell like you're drinking a campfire. I love that. I love the smell. When I smell those scotches, it makes me think about my camping trips and sitting around the fire pit in the evening and just listening to nature, which is one of my favorite things to do. So I would say uh, any of the, the peatier scotches would be my favorite. Okay, that's good. And we know that you have uh, quite a handsome collection. See, yes. So you mentioned listening or sitting by a fire mm -hmm. um, and what you one of those things that the scotch reminds you of. And for those who don't know, you enjoy camping. I do. And an interesting thing is that you enjoy camping alone, solo. I do. I do. So tell us a little bit about your camping adventures and why that's important to you. What is it about mm -hmm. camping and being with nature that re renews you, gives you energy, mm -hmm. why you enjoy that? Well, I think you just said it. It renews me. Uh, for those of you who don't know, and you may see me on TikTok and Instagram and teaching classes and you think I have this outgoing personality, I am an introvert at heart. And, and what being an introvert means to me is not that you're shy. It means that you renew yourself, you replenish yourself when you spend time alone. And so for me, when I go camping, that's my time to replenish and, and renew myself. And a, a big part of my camping is finding places that are beautiful scenery. Uh, I'm into photography, uh, landscape and nature photography. And it's one of the ways that I share gratitude with the world is by going out and taking these great photos and sharing them on Instagram and sharing them on different platforms. And one thing I, I know is that no one cares for photography as much as I do. So even if I wanted to take someone with me, they get annoyed pretty quickly on how often I'm stopping to take photos. It, a mile hike could take me two hours because I'm stopping so, so much to actually take photos. So not only do I like to do it because I'm an introvert, but I also don't want to be rushed or feel like I need to go faster because I have other people with me. So we're that's, not saying that's any it. names. No, no names. Other people. <laughs> no. Uh, no names, though. No, no names. names. No names. Okay. Well, I like the fact that you enjoy camping and doing those things mm -hmm. and you're okay if I don't want to do yeah. camping and sleeping in a tent or not having a shower or any of those things that involve being one with nature. And I love that you're okay with me going. You don't give me a lot of <laughs> pressure about not taking these trips. You tell me to be safe, which I am. I'm safe. I love that you're okay with me going. So I'm going to transition just a little bit, um, and I ask, I want to ask you one question about, tell us one thing, either personally or professionally, that you're most proud of. Personally or professionally that I'm most proud of? Listen, I, I, I say it all the time. If you, if you guys knew who I was in my previous life, my previous career, um, the, the, the fear of public speaking you know, held me back. I would, I would sabotage myself not to get promoted because I, I knew that that would cause me to have to speak in front of a group of people. And I, I physically couldn't do it. I was the guy who my knees would be knocking, my hands would be shaking, I'd be sweating. I was so nervous uh, doing public speaking. And I, I recognized that 
I wasn't being true to myself because I was letting a lot of opportunities pass me by because of this fear of public speaking. So, you know, my dad encouraged me to take Toastmasters and that was really the beginning of this, this transition into me getting comfortable in front of a camera or in front of a room. So when I think about my, my proudest accomplishment, it would be all the work that I put into learning how to be a better presenter and a better public speaker. And I'm still on that journey. I, I am not where I want to be on the scale of zero to 10. I'm, I feel like I'm maybe a seven. So there's still some work there. But to go from a zero to a seven in the short amount of time that has happened uh, is definitely uh, one of my biggest accomplishments. And so when you think about your journey and the journey that you're on personally, professionally, mm -hmm. what's next? Well, I'm working on what's next right now, which is uh, pretty exciting. So um, I'm not going to share too much of it because I'm still working on the logistics, but I'll peel back the onion a little. I am working on two things uh, with my, my PUSH program. I'm, I'm launching PUSH and taking it nationwide. I've been blessed to you know, run this coaching program here in New Jersey and also in Florida. However, there are agents all over the country they can use this type of training. So I have connected with two coaches that are helping me put together a program that I can launch nationwide where I'm taking my push programs. I have push one and push two and combining those together and making a more robust program. So that's coming out this fall. And then also um, push masterminds is, is coming. And so I'm really excited about, you know, where that journey is going to take me. I know that there's a, a lot of agents out there that are looking for the type of mastermind that I'm offering with the accountability that will be part of it. And uh, I'm ready to see that uh, unfold. Okay, so I'm going to switch again okay. on something that maybe people know. I think people probably realize that you enjoy cooking. I do. You enjoy being on the grill. Sure. So I'm interested in what you enjoy cooking the most. Most, oh, okay. Cooking either outside or inside. Okay, so let's talk about the grill. So I'm I'm a griller. I have two green eggs, and um, I would think out of all the different things that I cook on the egg, my cedar plank salmon is one of my favorites. That's right, good one. That's it comes good. out really good, and I love the whole process of you know cooking it on the cedar plank and the way it smells. It's fantastic. So that's number one. Number two, I, I feel like I have, I have mastered lamb chops. Uh, I have a good friend of mine who uh, came over for, uh, for dinner one night and I told him I had made lamb. He was like, oh, I don't, I don't eat lamb. Can we order some pizza? And I'm like, <laughs> just do me a favor. Not pizza. Try it. If you don't like it, we'll order a pizza. No harm, no foul, right? He cleaned the bones. <laughs> so... When I tell you I have this recipe figured out and the way I cook it on the grill and the stove top, it's top notch. <laughs> it is good. Both of them are good. So Thank I you. would say yes, I okay. agree. Those are both great. Um, I have an interesting next portion and this is a speed round. Oh, hold on. So for anyone who knows about speed round, I will tell you this is... Just a few questions, okay. easy, okay. and it's what comes top of mind, Okay. and it's some options. So speed round starts now. Let's go. Your preference, sweet or salty? Sweet. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Bourbon or tequila? Bourbon. Beach or mountains? Oh, that's a tough one. Mountains. This one might be a little controversial. Ooh. East Coast or West Coast? Ooh, no controversy. <laughs> West Coast all day. West Coast. All day. All day. Beer or wine? Beer. Buyer or seller? Seller. All day. <laughs> Seriously. Text or phone call? Text. Mm. Voice text at that. Voice text. Yeah. That's kind of in between. No. Voice text. Okay, voice text. And... Um, read or listen to books? Both. I prefer listen. Listen. Audio. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the end of speed round. Wasn't that was, too bad. That was easy. You did good. Oh, you were you. fast too. Yeah. I know what I like. Yeah. Okay. So I have, um, before I get to my last question, I want to ask you 
what advice would you offer to someone who's thinking about real estate, starting a career, or getting into real estate? Wow, that's a great question. That's a really good question. I, I think the first thing I would recommend um, and, and tell that person who is looking at getting into real estate is understanding what being a real estate agent is. When, when I started, you know, I thought it was about doing open houses and showing property. And really, real estate is about lead generating, finding people who want to buy, sell, invest in real estate. So you have to be comfortable doing that and stepping sometimes out of your comfort zone to learn scripts and objection handling so that you can create opportunities to get business. So that's that's number one. Uh, the second thing I would tell anyone looking to get into real estate, don't get caught up in the companies that you are interviewing with and how much money you're going to make at the company. If you are not getting the training, you're not going to make any, any money. So really spend some time and focus on what type of training, coaching, mentoring programs they have set up to help you learn how to become a real estate agent. Because what you're going to learn in real estate school, you're never going to see that except maybe how many you know square footage is in an acre. Maybe you'll see that again. But most things that you learn in real estate school is to pass the exam. In order to be a great professional real estate agent, you need a company that has great training. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I want to say thank you. And I have one final question. Okay. Do you need a, another sip? I don't know. Do I need another sip? Take one. Okay. Oh might boy. make the last question even more interesting. Mm. So the final question, and I, I really like this. I've heard this question being asked on other interviews or conversations that I've been involved in. And it's, how do you want to be remembered? Wow, that's a great question. Um, so I, personally or professionally, or just... You decide. You know, on, on a personal level, I, I want to be remembered, you know, by my, by my daughters and grandkids. It's just being a, a great dad, a great father, a great husband, um, plugged in and, and around, right? I want to be remembered for that and just who I am and how I show up every day. I think that's extremely important to me and that we created great memories, great memories together. That's on a, that's on a personal level. On, on a professional level, I, I want to be remembered as someone that gave more than he took, someone that was willing to help other people out and was always concerned with how are you doing and how can I best help you? I want people to think about me and, and just their memories are, he was always looking after me, looking to make sure I was okay and to make sure I was having success. That, that's how I want to be remembered. Thank you. Thank you for letting me have a conversation with you. Those who are listening, thank you for taking the time to listen. And it's been fun. Who knows? Scotch and Scripts take over. This could be something we do again. It could be a thing. You can give us some feedback, how you liked it, what questions, if I come back, you'd like me to ask David on your behalf, what other people are interested in. But before we close, I'll yes. give it to you for any final closing remarks or words. Oh, well, um, I'm glad that you guys got a chance to uh, meet my wife, Michelle. Some of you guys don't know her. Um, I tell a... Um, pretty impactful story, you know, in my push program and when I'm out, you know, doing these mastermind classes that some of you may or may not have heard, but part of the, the story that I always share uh, was an impactful conversation I had with my coach. You know, my, my coach, um, at the time I was living in Dallas and I wasn't really creating the income that I needed to create. And every time I talk to my coach, I'm big on talking about family and the time we spend at dinner you know, talking about our favorite parts of the day and just kind of sharing collectively as a family. And Michelle always came up in, in those conversations and I was always giving her so much praise on how hard she works in, in the pharmaceutical industry. You know, she works from sun up to sundown after dinner and the girls aren't asleep. She's still on her computer doing work. And um, my coach said to me, he was like, David, you you have a busy schedule too. You know, if I looked at your schedule, I would think you, you have a great business because it's full from the time you get to the office until the time you go home. And yet you're not creating any income. You're not making any money. And here's what he said to me that had a major impact on me. There's a saying that goes, logic makes people think, emotion makes people act. Some of you guys have heard that before. 
Um, the, the way I took that is logically, I knew that in order for me to make money in real estate, I needed to get out of my comfort zone and I needed to go start talking to people in my database and for sale by owners and expires. But that fe the fear was strong. The drunk monkey was strong. And I kept attending classes and going to seminars and doing training, getting ready to get ready. That whole, um, what's it called? Analysis paralysis. Yeah. I was stuck in that. So my coach said to me, how would your family dinner go if you had to sit down with Michelle after watching her work all day and then say to her, I didn't do one thing to bring income into our family. I mean, that that hit me when I thought about that, because when he asked me that question, I really played it through in my head. And I, I said to myself then and there, I'll never fix my lips to say that I just have to get off, get to work and I have to get off the sidelines and pick up the phone and make things happen. So the next day I did. And I won't bore you with all the details, but it was a rough start. It was a very rough start of getting hung up on and just getting frustrated because I wasn't able to create the opportunities. But let me tell you this, when you do it day after day and you focus on getting 1% better, things happen gradually. And then suddenly you're booking appointments and you're creating opportunities for yourself. And so I, I share that story to, to tell you guys you're in real estate, you work for yourself, you're independent contractors. No one's gonna force you to do it. You don't have a boss that's gonna write you up or give you a bad review. If you don't do the activities, you don't get paid. So take it from me when I tell you, you can improve if you focus on your one thing every day and your one thing is real estate agents is legion, script practice and role play. And for those of you who don't know me, I have a program called Push, Prospect Until Success Happens. I encourage you to you know, go to my website, davidradney.com to learn more about the program. Go to my YouTube, go to my TikTok, go to my Instagram. I'm constantly putting out content that reminds you of what you need to be doing every day. Allow me to be your CRO, your chief reminding officer and remind you of what you need to be doing every day to have success. I appreciate your time. I hope that you enjoyed the interview, the takeover, and um, we'll, we'll do it again. I appreciate you guys. Hope you have a good day. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.